Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. We are going to be doing a goddess reading today. So if that is not your vibe, then this will not be your reading. So the way we like to do our goddess readings is we connect with one main goddess generally and then we pull two supporting goddesses depending on the deck we use, but we're definitely going to be doing that this week with this particular goddess deck. So one main goddess is our main sort of theme, our main energy, two supporting goddesses to sort of help support that energy and then we'll be getting additional messages from additional decks. So let's see what the goddesses have in store for us this week. What do we need to see? Who is supporting us right now through all of this crazy energy? Who do we need to be guided by, supported by. Let's get our opening goddess energy here. And we have Tara. And it says, breathe, presence, mindfulness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I actually was really, it was really quite interesting because I was like, oh man, I hope we don't have another really deep shadowy kind of energy and goddess coming up because we've had a lot of them recently. We've had so much shadowy kind of energy coming through in a lot of readings, but I love that this is the, the goddess that's coming through as our main support to guide us, which is breathe, presence and mindfulness. And so when we really feel into that right now, we need our mindfulness so strongly, so deeply. We need to be present within our own internal state, our own internal reality, and be very, very mindful of what is going on in the collective without it impacting our life. So the thing that I'm really hearing with this is right now, if you are feeling distracted by the collective energy, because let's face it, it's intense as fuck, right? It is brutal in some ways, what's going on in the collective energy. And I will be speaking about this so much over the coming weeks because it is a very, very, very intense season we are in right now. So if you're feeling pulled into that energy, if you're feeling distracted by that energy, which I definitely was um, sort of about a week ago, I was very distracted by the collective noise and the collective energy and what was going on in the world. And what I knew I had to do rather than get really sucked into that because I love going down rabbit holes and I love going down these energy spaces and feeling into like what's actually going on behind the scenes and like going really deep dive into these things. I knew that would distract me from what I'm meant to be doing right now. And so what I did instead was double down on my meditation. And so that's the message I'm hearing is if you're being distracted by the external world, double down on your meditation double down on your practices, double down on your heart centered work. If you don't do heart breath yet, do heart breath, right? If you don't know how to do heart breath, figure it out, <laughs> right? I, I'm sure I've got a video, video on it somewhere, but heart breath is super simple. It's breathing in and out through the heart, through the nose, obviously, like you're doing a nasal breath, which is very, very um, relaxing. So nasal breath is our parasympathetic nervous system regulator, Mouth breathing is a sympathetic nervous system activator. So nasal breathing will support us to find more presence and mindfulness, but breathing through the nose with a connection to the heart center, which is why it's called heart breath. It's why I call it that. But breathing into the heart, feeling the heart, feeling the presence within the heart, feeling what emotions are alive in your heart, right? Allowing yourself to be really, really present with what is true for you right now versus what is going on in the collective. It is going to support you so much. Being so present with what is within you energetically and emotionally and what is around you energetically and emotionally. So that's our first card. And I could not have asked for a better goddess to come through with that because it's just the one thing I, I've just been talking about feeling so strongly over the past couple of weeks is that yes, the external world is chaos. It's stormy. It's, it feels brutal. It feels like we're being ripped apart. I've called it the collective tower moment, right? And in that there is so much negativity that we could feed into, or we can try to find our internal centered state. And the more we can connect to that at any given moment, the more easeful our day will be. So if you're feeling pulled into these energies that don't feel good, reconnect back, breathe into the heart, do another meditation, do some nervous system regulation work, do some form of activation if you need to, become heart-centered, become so mindful of your own energy, and that will support you the most right now. 
So I love that coming through as our opening goddess. What else can we see? Two supporting goddesses for this. Who else do we need to see? With goddess Tara, we have the one that I can never say, but this is memories and past life recall. Why will you not focus? Find the focus point, please. Wow. Every time I try to bring it up, it does not want to focus. Okay. Memories, past life recall. So what I'm hearing with this is that because we are going through so much intensity with shadow triggers is that you may be going through re-experiencing things that you thought you'd put to bed, that you thought you'd put to rest, right? Re-experiencing aspects of self, old shadows, old elements. Maybe there is past life stuff coming through. Maybe you've been focusing on a wound such as the witch wound and you felt like you dealt with it. And yet now you're seeing another layer to it, right? It is because we are being triggered at such a heightened level as a collective right now that you will have to face more of the shadows that have been buried. And it's like we're seeing another layer to these shadows. It doesn't mean that you have to relive it all completely, but we're just seeing another layer. It's, it's showing you another point of awareness that you may need to focus on to feel into so you can close it out completely. So anything that is coming up from the past, just know that it's coming up to be cleared. So if you need support with that, focus on karmic clearing, focus on that purging energy. I have activations for that. I'll link them below, but really allow yourself to connect into what needs to be cleared, what needs to be completely transmuted, what is coming up for me now for a deeper level of awareness, right? Being really mindful in what is coming forward, being really present in that emotion, that energy as well, right? Finding a depth of presence in that will help you clear out that energy quicker, so the more present you can be with an emotion or an energy, the quicker it dissolves, dissipates, clears, transmutes. Whereas if you stay at a surface level with it and you try to bypass it in any way, it's going to keep just playing, 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 playing on your nervous system until it gets the awareness it wants, right? So being very, very mindful of what is coming up right now. And our final one here is Freya. Okay. We have had Freya so much recently. And goodness me, it just does not want to focus. But we have the goddess Freya and this says confidence, courage, and leadership. The goddess Freya has been coming up in so many goddess readings over the past few months. It's not funny. And it's because we are being called to step into our more courageous leadership right? We spoke about this in a reading we did the other day. Might have been the guidance of the week reading. It might have been the full moon reading. I can't remember which one, but one of those. There was this depth of needing to stand in our power, knowing what your true worth is and standing in that power. So as we have this energy of presence, mindfulness and breath, right? This is our central card. This is our anchoring goddess. This is the one we're working with the most. These are here to support us. But this is showing us as well that the more present we are within self, and not distracted by the external noise, the more we can step into our own internal courage, power, sovereignty, our sense of self-confidence, right? The more present we are with what is true for us, the more we can step into our Freya energy. So presence allows us to find our depth of confidence, worth, courage. So how present are you right now with yourself? How much noise are you allowing into your field and getting so easily distracted by all of the chatter that is going on in the collective? Or how deeply present are you right now within your own internal space? And really feeling into that. What is true for you in that energy? Let's get some extra messages here. What else do we need to see? We're going to get four of these. So what else do we need to see to support us with our beautiful goddess energy? Okay, and what we're going to do is pull four cards and then we will have a look. Okay, let's see what these are. I don't always like doing it this way because I'm like, oh, I've got no pre-idea of what's coming until we flip them over. So we have the Eight of Swords. 
and I'm real. I don't know what's going on, but it's just not focusing with this one today. But we'll just do the best we can. We have the Eight of Swords, which is our self imprisonment. We have the, oops, Five of Swords. Ew. <laughs> one of my least favorite cards in the tarot is the Five of Swords. We have Ten of Pentacles. Beautiful card. And then we have the Queen of Cups. Beautiful. Okay. So Eight of Swords, Five of Swords. Not necessarily beautiful cards. Not necessarily loving cards. They can be quite sorrow filled. But it's really about releasing yourself from any old energies that are imprisoning you. Any old energies that are feeling like they are still creating an old narrative. What I'm hearing with this is that with this energy of Tara and this, this feeling of presence, right, is that for many, and this is not going to feel pleasant when I say it, but for many, there's still a level of self-victimization that is taking place. And with that self-victimization, it feels like it's not that you, you may have had trauma. You may have been through experiences that you wouldn't wish on somebody else. You may have been through really hard times, but we have to take power back, right? You have to take your power back and not allow any self-victimization energy into your field. Be really present with where you are in that. Be really present with your mindset in that, in your own internal dialogue around that. Because that self-created prison that we are in with the Eight of Swords, right? It's our own making and it's one we also can get out of. It's one that we have the key to get out of. But we have this depth of sorrow and deception and self, I want to say self-punishment as well. And so that's really what I'm feeling with this is that this feeling of self-punishment, which really does come down to the humiliation wound. I've spoken about this quite a bit recently, um, but this feeling of needing to punish yourself. And it's, it's almost like taking this, how can I put it? Taking the narrative, the story, whatever it is that you want to call it of what you've been through and continuing to perpetuate that story or narrative to feed your self-punishment and because it feels good if you have a humiliation wound punishment feels good and so it's learning that punishment is not a good thing in this situation self-punishment is not a trait we want to embody we want to remove it we want to clear it right and so what i'm really feeling with this is to be really present be very very mindful be really, really discerning about what stories your mind space is playing out, right? Things from the past coming up, things about your worth, things about how you feel about yourself, all of these things. It feels like you're feeding this old narrative that is a self-punishing narrative. And it doesn't mean things haven't happened. It just means you have to stop self-perpetuating any state of suffering, so take that little bit, leave it if it doesn't resonate or if it feels a little bit too much right now, that's okay. We then have the Ten of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups. Beautiful Ten of Pentacles is our, to me, it's like everything we've ever desired is finally coming into fruition. We have this sitting in our tree of life, right? Everything is finally aligned. Everything is finally balancing. Everything is coming into alignment with what we truly wanted, but we have to release ourselves from the prison in order to get there. We can't get everything we want in life if we're still holding on to these energies, if we're still holding on to past energies, if we're still not understanding how worthy we are just for being here, right? Our Queen of Cups is our beautiful, intuitive queen, very, very in touch with their emotional state. But what I'm hearing with this as well is if your emotions, again, are continuing to cycle the same story, and you're not closing out an emotional state, it means you're not fully experiencing the emotion enough in order for it to find its completion, right? So the nerve synapse hasn't found its completion. And I'm just seeing these emotions are keeping people fixed and fixated on old energy, 
just doesn't need to be there anymore. Let it go, right? Let all of that energy dissipate. Come back to this present moment. This present moment, you can recreate the narrative of your future. You can recreate the life that you desire in the present. You can't do it from the past. So what are you still, it's like what I'm hearing is swimming in an ocean of the past, of past regrets, of past pain, swimming in this ocean of self-punishment. And in that, you're denying yourself everything you've ever truly wanted. So how is that impacting you right now? Now, when I said Tara coming out beautiful, it felt like such a light card because there's been so much heavy energy around readings. And I think in the full moon reading, I even spoke about this saying, I haven't wanted to do readings for the past week because the energy has just been so intense. And every time I've sat down to do a reading, it's like, oh man, it just feels like it's just going to be trigger central. And I thought with Tara coming out, there would be no triggers, but we're in a shadow season. We are in an intense collective shadow season. And if you haven't watched the past couple readings to see what that's all about, then feel free to go back and watch them. Or if you haven't seen the post I wrote about the full moon right now and what the like what in the world is actually going on right now, feel free to read that because it might give a bit of a different perspective on why there is so much of this shadowy energy, right? Why it feels like we're swimming in this sea, this ocean of old, stagnant fucking energy. And it's like being pulled down into the murky depths again and not understanding how to get back up, right? We need presence. We need to be present. We need to be here now and creating our future from that place. So what does that look like, feel like to you? Let's get some final messages here. What else do we need to see with these cards? Okay, first one we have is strength. Strength and vulnerability go hand in hand. And but we need strength. In I think it was a full moon reading. We spoke about the warrior spirit. We need that so much right now. We need that internal warrior so strong right now. But the warrior spirit also needs to know when we need to take a breath, be vulnerable. And what I'm hearing here is be vulnerable with yourself. Like stop putting the mask on to yourself of how fucking strong you are. And actually listen to your inner self and the vulnerabilities that your inner self has to share right now. The vulnerabilities that your wounded self has to share right now because there is so much value in that. What I'm just hearing this like internal vulnerable self wanting attention wanting to be heard to be witnessed to be seen give the inner vulnerable self your presence and you will start to shift all of this energy right you will start to shift it because you'll understand what your fear of vulnerability is what you're afraid to actually witness and see next one we have is the four of wands don't know what is going on i do not like that it's not focusing we have the four of wands this is our celebratory card this is you know coming together celebration this is joy this is union so many different energies with that but what i'm hearing with this really quite interesting oh it's such a beautiful a beautiful energy and very different to how i'd normally read the four of wands what I'm hearing is this union is between your strength and vulnerability. That's the union to focus on between your present self and your future self, between your vulnerable state and your strong warrior spirit, finding union between your fragile nature and your confident self. That's where I'm feeling the union coming with the four of wands. It's like learning how to see that there are two sides to every energy and neither is right or wrong, good or bad. Both have their value. And when we can find harmony within that, we start to experience our life in a very different way. So that's how I'm feeling the four of wands. It's, it's a very different energy, but it feels like the union that wants to take place 
is not just a union within self, which we normally talk about between our internal masculine and feminine or, you know, whatever it might be. But this more feels like very fine tuning those inner union states between the two sides of the same coin of every area of your life and seeing that neither is good or bad. Both have high value and both offer us deep insight. But how can you find union between strength and vulnerability? How can you find a loving, a loving center point between those two energies? Really interesting card there. Okay, let's go. Final message. What else do we need to see? And we have the wheel of fortune. <laughs> Every now and then I just want to say it like that because I do. Wheel of Fortune energy. Okay. So this is... Oh, man. Okay. This is such an interesting energy because Wheel of Fortune has been playing in my field so much over the past little bit of time. And... There is a song that's been coming through with that so much. And I think this was the song that came through in our tarot journey because every major arcana, I channeled a song that went with that. And I'm fairly certain this song came through as the Wheel of Fortune. I may be incorrect there, but it's the song that I'm very strongly connecting to the Wheel of Fortune at the moment because every time I hear this song, I hear the Wheel of Fortune card. Every time I see the Wheel of Fortune card, I hear this song. And also a piece that I'm writing for the next Moon Diaries, which is part of our Substack, sort of like I'm doing multiple different facets within Substack of like different series, different sort of energies. But the Moon Diaries is one of those. And I'm doing one, I, I don't want to give it away, but I'm doing one currently for the waning moon. And the song that keeps playing on my mind is Waiting on the World to Change um, by John Mayer. And the, the line is in that that keeps playing is um, um, when you trust the television, which you, I, I'm, I'm not going to get the lyric exactly right, but when you trust the television, what you get is what you've got. And when, you own the, when they own the information, they can bend it all they want. And it's like, but it's like, it's hard to see, it's hard to... What's the other line? It was playing so much in my mind last night. Um, it's hard to beat the system when you're standing at a distance. So we keep on waiting for the world to change. If you want the world to change, get in the mix. Get in, get dirty, get messy. We can't wait for our world to change. No one is coming in with a silver platter of everything you've ever wanted to say, here you go. No work required. Here's everything you've ever wanted. No, it doesn't work like that. If you want the world to change, be a part of that change. If you want your world to change, be a part of that change. Right? We can't wait for the world to change. And the line saying, it's hard to beat the system when you're standing at a distance. Then stop standing at the fucking distance and get in. Get yourself muddy, mucky, dirty get yourself in the mix it's challenging it is hard the way I do readings is fucking hard because I know that the way I do readings triggers people but that's also part of my mission to help change the world we can't change the world by sitting back and saying everything is peach king everything is sunshine and rainbows everything is all good right everything is love and light we can't change the world in that energy we have to stand up for what we fucking believe in. We have to fight sometimes. We have to have a desire so strong within us that we want the world to change. Do you want your life to turn? Do you want your life to change? Then get the fuck in and start playing in that energy. And if you're new to the way I channel, I swear a lot when I channel sometimes, especially when it's a really strong message. I don't swear much in my day-to-day -day life. When I'm channeling, I swear a lot. And especially when I'm channeling something that's just like, are you going to sit on the sidelines? 
then expect to see your life stay the same. If you want your life to change, fucking change it. Get in. Right? You can't sit on the sidelines expecting things to miraculously appear the way you want them to. Get out of your self-imprisonment. Get out of your self-punishment and start creating the life that you actually want. That is how we create that ripple effect of change. If you stand in your sovereignty, you inspire other people to stand in their sovereignty. If you show up as your truly aligned, authentic self, you inspire other people to do the same. If you do something that other people find challenging or triggering, guess what? You're going to create some form of change. It may not feel comfortable. I don't like doing it all the time. Actually, I kind of love it now. But I didn't like it. I didn't, I didn't want to be someone that, that read this way. I didn't want to be someone that was triggering. But shadow work is my sweet spot. It's why I teach it. It's why I do so much of it. Because I can see beyond the facade. I can see beyond the mask. Do I enjoy it all the time? No. Do I like being the one that has to rip the bandaid off all the time? No. But I will be. If that's what spirit guides me to do, I will get in there and I will rip that bandaid off and I will show you that bleeding, gaping wound. And I'll poke it and prod it and be like, can you see? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? That you're the one that's perpetuating this energy. And if you can't see that, then you're in denial, right? Do I enjoy doing it to clients? No. Do clients come back? Yes. <laughs> because we're creating change, right? And so if you want your world to change, get in the mix and change it. Don't sit on the sidelines. If you're waiting for the next season of your evolution and you're just sitting back waiting for it, it's going to be a really long wait. We have to be willing to get in the thick of life and say, I'm not willing to settle for this shit anymore. I want to have the most beautiful, confident version of self that is full of self-worth, that knows who and what they are, what the fuck we want. And we're not willing to settle for anything less than that. That is Freya. Radical acceptance, not just of self, but of what we actually want. I'm going to take radical acceptance of all of my desires and I'm going to take charge and I'm going to bring them to life because that is what we're here to do. We are not here to sit on the sidelines of our life. So this is where we have to have this essence of presence, right? Going back to our Tara, our anchoring card here, the essence of presence to know what is mine, what is other. Is it my battle or is it the collective battle? If it's a collective battle, I'll disconnect. If it's my own battle, I will engage. I will engage in that battle. I will fight and I will fight to the death, right? If it's my own internal battle, if it's my own internal desire to shift, if it's my personal path, and we spoke about this, I think it was the full moon, defend to the end the worthwhile, defend to the end what you know is true for you. This is why we have to be so mindful of what is ours and what is collective, because we don't want to be fighting a collective fight that is not ours to engage in. But we do have to be understanding and mindful of what is going on in the world around us. And then coming back to our center point and enter that battle, enter that energy, enter the collective from a place of love, compassion, empathy, of grace. Enter into that space in a place that we can create change versus feeling like we're just like fueling the rage and fire. So what does that look like for you? But if you are waiting for the world to change, get off the sidelines because it won't change without you. And that is a hard message I feel for a lot of people to hear because we feel like we're doing all this work. We feel like we're engaging. We feel like we're, we're doing our part. But for many, it's that we're not taking ownership of what we need to do within our own life to create this ripple effect of change in the external. So whoo, take that as it resonates, leave it if it doesn't, because I know that's going to be challenging for a lot of people. But as I say, these, these are not light, fluffy readings. I don't read that way. That's not how I'm guided to work. 
I am guided to trigger, to push, to motivate, to inspire, to engage. I'm, I'm here to trigger for a reason. And it is all about us standing in our most sovereign energy and saying, this is who I am. This is what I'm here for. And I'm willing to go all in on this life. So that is, even though the essence of it is all about presence and mindfulness and breath, it is bringing that into your day-to-day -day life and then creating the life that you desire without these limitations, without these restrictions, right? So we're not swimming in this sea, this abyss energy anymore. So as I always say, take what you need, leave what you don't. But if this is triggering you, also let it trigger you. If this is pissing you off, let it piss you off. As long as that projection doesn't come back, because it's not a personal reading, it is a collective reading, but let it trigger the shit out of you. Let yourself be irritated by it. Let it feel like nails on a chalkboard against your soul, because that will inspire you to change. It will inspire you to face what that feeling is. So that's why I embrace the triggers. I embrace that that energy because it's the only thing that actually allows us to grow and change. I always say we need friction to change, right? We need friction to grow. Without friction, we stay stagnant and we don't want to stay stagnant in our life. So see how it all resonates. Let me know in the comments below how it feels for you. If you've got this far, then I am very, very impressed because I do feel like some people probably would have tapped out at this energy here. But if you've got here, really, really impressed, let me know how you feel in the comments below. If you need support at any stage for any reason, everything is always listed down in the description box below, including one-on-one -on -one sessions, courses, activations, readings, and everything in between. But otherwise, sending you so much love, beautiful souls, and we'll connect again very soon.